Greetings, everyone. Brad here with Mild Mannered EDC. Hope you're all really doing well out there. So today we're going to look at what is very much a budget offering from Gerber Knives, or I guess Gerber Gear more appropriately, and that's this. This is the Gerber Fuse. You know, this is an interesting knife, and this is definitely not a knife that I thought, once I sort of got it, I was like, eh, I don't know if I'm ended up doing a review on this. And as I mentioned, very much in the budget range, right? So we're kind of in that, I think I paid 28 bucks, but I've seen it everywhere from like 25 to 35, kind of depending on um, where you look and where you find it. And this is because of its sort of budget nature of the Gerber brand, you're going to find it in retail stores and places like that, as well as online. But uh, yeah, it's just not a knife that I expected to actually do a review on. <laughs> but after carrying it quite a bit, using it, flipping it a ton, um, I kind of said, you know what, I think there's enough going on here in this particular knife to warrant a review. And again, because of its price, it's really pretty accessible for a lot of people. And so a lot of people and Gerber is a really well known brand, right? I mean, it may not be for a lot of us who are maybe deep into the knife hobby or EDC hobby, you know, Gerber is one of those brands that I think is still trying to win back some hearts a little bit in that community. But but for a lot of people, it's still a very well-known brand and well-liked brand um, in sort of just basic knives and tools and things like that. So there you go. So anyways, I think this could be helpful to walk through. Now, I don't think we need to do an exhaustive, you know, 20 minute review or anything. Promises, promises, right? Uh, but but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll sort of do a modified classic uh, mild mannered review here. All right, so let's talk about some specs and then we'll do a couple of size comparisons and we'll get underway. So we've got a blade length here of 3.37 uh, inches, excuse me. You've got an overall of uh, 8.23 inches when it's opened up tip to tail. And you've got a really lightweight, and this was definitely a pro on this knife, of 2.83 ounces. So it's very light for what you're getting. Um, we'll talk about that, but but yeah, it's, it's a definitely a nice lightweight um, carrying knife. All right, a couple of size comparisons. How about a Civivi Backlash and a kind of dirty CJRB Rhea. These are definitely, um, you know, budget competitors here, um, certainly with, with the Gerber budget line. So keep that in mind. And then how about just as another, since it's here, mild mannered Swiss Army knife. So that gives you a sense of what we're talking about. This is very much a middle of the road size type knife. Uh, and definitely, you know, from a spec standpoint, size that I that I kind of like and I appreciate. So, all right, let's go ahead and get into this. Let's talk about the blade a little bit on this knife. So the blade is made of 7CR, 17MOV. You know, that is what it is. Um, <laughs> I feel like Gerber just has a huge pile of, of 7CR sitting around in wherever warehouse that they make these, and they've just got to keep churning stuff out with it until they use it all up. But that definitely seems to be the steel they're using for their budget, their sort of budget style knives. You know, whatever. Hey, it is what it is. If, if you're a, if you're a steel snob um, or somebody who's really, really cares about steel, uh, you know, as it relates to your pocket knives, you're probably just immediately going, no way, not interested, get that out of here. But you know, for I think for a lot of the, just the average folk who are just looking for a pocket knife, 7CR, it'll be fine. I mean, it's it's not gonna it's not gonna rust up or break in half or do any of the you know it's it's it'll be fine. But don't expect any sort of great performance out of it in terms of edge retention or you know any of those sort of things that we kind of look for. Even even um, stain resistance necessarily. So, but it's fine. It's very much a budget steel, and this is very much a budget knife. So we've got this really actually, I think, pretty attractive drop point um, kind of uh, uh, shape to the blade here, which is one of the things that drew me to this. I think it's actually a pretty darn attractive blade. Got them some, some, some thumb studs sort of sitting out there, right? Uh, we've got the Gerber logo, and then we've got this nice, uh, fairly tall flat grind and a very much a stone washy kind of finish. And for the most part, though, a pretty sterile blade. I mean, you've got the little, you know, I guess, item number or whatever it is. Uh, and like I said, the logo and then the thumb studs, and that's about it. And that, so I think the blade itself is actually one of the nicer parts of this knife. Uh, it's it's just, it's attractive and I think is a pretty decent cutter. Um, but there are some other things here I think we're talking about. It's chamfered nicely up here on the spine, so you're not getting any kind of, you know, you do that fingernail test that I like to do to, you know, doesn't scrape off any fingernails. So I think everything's nice and rounded off on the edges. The plunge line, the choil is sort of well ahead of the plunge line there, which I think is another really nice uh, attention to detail. That can be, I've seen that missed on very, very expensive knives. So, you know, I always appreciate that when I see it on a budget knife. And you have a decent grind. Um, it's not the most even grind on either side, but but it's fine. And it came quite sharp uh, and, and, you know, has kind of remained that way. So 
you know, say what you want about 7CR, I guess. But there you go. So that's kind of what we have with the blade. And I think, like I said, I think the blade is really functional and just, it's just a good, nice, classic kind of drop point style blade on this knife. All right. Now let's talk about action. The action is weird. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Weird's not there. Yeah. I was eloquent. Thanks. That's my scientific. The action's sort of, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm of two minds on the action. So on some level, it's got a nice, crisp flicking action. Um, you know, it's thumb stud deployed. Yeah. And in fact is riding on, I don't know if you can see them in there. Maybe I get the light just right. It's running on two phosphor bronze washers, which is also a nice touch. They are different sizes. And I thought about opening this up and I tried just barely, but nothing was budging. And I'll just be honest with you. I've tried to take apart budget Gerber knives before. And it exploded and then I just cannot get them back together in a way that actually makes them usable again. So that's one of the downsides of these kind of knives. It's like, eh, beware how much deconstruction you want to do with these. Uh, but back to the action, very sort of satisfying flip open. And I, I think I mentioned kind of in the beginning of the video, I spent a lot of time flipping this and I did uh, because I liked the, I liked the flipping open. Now the close, yeah, <laughs> that's a whole other thing. There you go. Yep, this is what we're doing to close this. And it's not like, yeah, it's whatever, however tight this is. I mean, I, you know, how it's running, it just is one of those where this is not gonna be an action piece. It's not even because it's got like a really great detent or something like that. It's just weird. It's just a strange action. And like I said, I enjoy the opening of this knife quite a bit. It makes a nice sound. It's authoritative. It opens pretty, you know, if you're just using a normal thumb stud action, it opens pretty darn well. Uh, but the close is definitely going to have to take some, it's not one of those just going to fall shut or something like that. It's not even one of those that you're really going to shake shut. Um, <laughs> I think shaking it, you'll end up sort of popping it back open more than anything else. So know that you're going to have to put a little more effort into closing this knife and that's just going to be part of the deal. So eh, read into that what you will. All right, it is a liner lock. It's got a very <laughs> significant lockup. We're talking mm, 80, 90% there. Is that a bad thing? I don't necessarily think so. It doesn't have really any blade rock or blade play or anything like that. So, you know, it's pretty solid. Uh, I did some mild spine whacking kind of stuff and it didn't pop open or anything. So I think it's perfectly safe and, and perfectly usable on that front. So, you know, it came centered. It's kind of still centered. It's a little off to the clip side there. Again, $25, $30, the kind of weird opening nature of this. And I did fiddle with it just a little bit. Um, so, you know, it is what it is, but it's not rubbing or anything like that on the scales. So, you know, the action, there you go. That's kind of what we've got with action. It's like I said, I'm sort of of two minds with it. Part of it I like, part of it I'm kind of eh, not great. All right. Let's talk about scales and hardware here. So scales are very, very lightweight FRN. Cool. Uh, it's sort of an aluminum insert that they've put here, uh, just to, I think more for aesthetics than anything else. They've got a little pivot cover there. It's fine. Um, I think the benefit of that is it's definitely lightweight. Now I will say this, uh, this, this backspacer portion here is a little, it's okay. Um, I don't know why they did that. They've got standoffs and then they've got this, this stuff, this, these parts of the FRN. It's a full backspacer in some ways, which makes that kind of nice, but it was sort of unnecessary. I don't know why they did that. They could have just had total flow through construction there, but it's sort of what they wanted to do. And I think the, the downside of really doing that, you can sort of see that maybe. I don't know if you can see that all that well, but it's, it's not even fully flush. I can even kind of get my fingernail in there and push those apart. So again, I think they would have been better off just leaving that out altogether and just going with their standoffs. But yeah. They are using flat head uh, recessed screws, which is very nice, um, especially here on the clip, which is a stainless steel kind of standard Gerber clip. We'll talk about that in a sec. But again, um, nice flat head recessed screws. So definitely points for that for Gerber. So that's sort of what's going on here, scales and hardware. It's basically kind of a plasticky kind of FRN and, and, and it's not the most rigid of anything, but it does have these kind of full, it does have liners, right? So it's got a liner on both sides. They're nested, which is nice because I think it adds that little bit of rigidity that you probably want. If you're going to be using sort of really relatively thin FRN plastic, whatever you want to call it. So yeah. Okay. Now 
Ergos and carry. The Ergos on this knife are actually really good. That's one of the other really... I, I've enjoyed the Ergos on this. I No real hot spots to speak of from the clip, although that can be subjective. Uh, but just overall, it's a pretty darn nice um, ergonomic knife. Uh, your, your thumb rests nicely up here if you want to be kind of in that hammer grip. It's all... Yeah, I mean, it's... It's fine. There's a little bit of a, oops, you can see it there, I think, on my finger. Maybe, just slightly. If you're really bearing down on this, there you go. You're going to get this from this part of the, uh, there we go, from the lock bar. Instead of doing a bit of a cutout here, they've made the lock bar sort of proud and sticks out. And so the, the result of that is it's pretty, e I mean, it is easy to sort of disengage the lock, but... You do maybe feel that a bit from an ergo standpoint if you are starting to bear down, sort of really kind of getting into it. But again, this is not a knife I would necessarily recommend for some significant hard use. <laughs> so there you go. So ergos, they're 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 fine. They're good, actually. Carry. Carry is the other thing that I think is actually really nice about this. Might be the one the best part of this knife is how it carries. It is thin. It is lightweight. It's got a nice deep carry pocket clip with recessed screws that's got some good spring to it. I mean, this thing just slides right into the pocket. Get a hank out here for you. No muss, no fuss, disappearing. Um, just a very, very carryable knife in a lot of ways. So from that standpoint, I, I don't think you're going to be disappointed in, in how this kind of you know, rides around with you <laughs> in your pocket. Not huge on the Gerber logo there on the pocket clip. Kind of wish they hadn't done that, but that seems to be something that they do. A couple other brands kind of do that too. And yeah, I'm sure you could, well, it seems to be a little etched in there. I don't know. Yeah, so that's what you got there. So what do I think overall for 25, 30 bucks? You know, I don't know, like I've said, you're definitely in steep competition mode with these kind of knives, right? With maybe better steels, better materials, sort of better fit and finish sort of overall. And that I think is continuing, continues to be what plagues the Gerber budget line is, is that <laughs> they just, they get close and then they just don't quite get there. Missed it by that much. Again, I think these are positive steps and I think this shows Gerber's interest in continuing to try to improve and sort of, like I said, win the hearts and minds of some of um, maybe the folks that they've lost over the years, particularly here in the hobby, but you know, you're not going to hate this knife, I don't think, especially if, if you're just looking for something to keep in your pocket to open a few boxes or open some mail or, you know, maybe cut up the occasional apple or whatever. Basic little tasks, this thing will be just fine. And if you lose it or break it or it gets stolen or whatever, it's not going to be the end of the world, right? Because it's 25, 35 bucks, something like there. It's, yeah. Um, and, you know, this is another one of those that I would call a very good, adequate sort of truck knife, right? or car knife, right? That you just leave in your center console or in an emergency pack or something like that. And you know, it's there and it'll do the job and it'll do what knives do, which is ultimately cut stuff, right? So anyways, all right. So that's what we've got here on the Gerber Fuse. Bit of a mixed bag. I, I wanted to be more positive, but at the same time, it kind of is what it is. And I think it's got some good things going for it. It's not perfect and it's got room for improvement, but at least... I'm seeing forward momentum here from a company that I do sort of have a soft spot for. So anyways, with that, I hope you've enjoyed this review. Thanks so much for coming by. Please stay safe out there. Be mild-mannered to one another. And all the best.